offer you all a warm welcome to this service of the presentation of Christ in the Temple, which is also known as Carlomas. And so may the Lord be with you. Dear friends, 40 days ago we celebrated the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now we recall the day on which he was presented in the temple, when he was offered to the Father and shown to his people. As a sign of his coming among us, his mother was purified, as we now come to him for cleansing. In their old age, Simeon and Anna recognized him as their Lord, as we today sing of his glory. Together this morning we celebrate both the joy of his coming and his search in judgment. Looking back to the day of his birth and forward to the coming days of his passion. of our Saviour Jesus Christ. I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me shall never walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Let us therefore bring our sins into his light and confess them in penitence and faith. Father eternal, giver of light and grace, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in what we have thought, in what we have said and done. 
through ignorance, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We have wounded your love and marred your image in us. We are sorry and ashamed and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and lead us out from darkness to walk as children of light. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And the collect for the day. Let us pray that we may know and share the light of Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, light of the nations and glory of Israel, make your home among us and present us pure and holy to your heavenly Father, your God and our God. Amen. And so we now listen to our first reading from Emma. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Since the children have flesh and blood, he too shared in their humanity, so that by his death, he might break the power of him who holds the power of death, that is the devil, and free those who all their lives were held in slavery by their fear of death. For surely it is not angels he helps, but Abraham's descendants. For this reason, he had to be made like them, fully human in every way, in order that he might become a merciful, and faithful high priest in service to God, and that he might make atonement for the sins of the people. Because he himself suffered when he was tempted, he is able to help those who are being tempted. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Meekness and majesty, manhood and deity, in perfect harmony, the man who is God, Lord of eternity, dwells in humanity, kneels in humility, and washes our feet. Oh, what a mystery! and majesty bow down and worship for this is your God this is your God Father's your radiance Unsearchable, God the invisible. 
invisible, love indestructible, when frailty appears. Lord of infinity, stooping so tenderly, lifts our humanity to the heights of his throne. Listen to the reading of the Holy Gospel, which will be followed by the sermon by Barney. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. When the time came for the purification rites required by the law of Moses, Joseph and Mary took him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male is to be consecrated to the Lord and to offer a sacrifice in keeping with what is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of doves and two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem called Simeon who was righteous and devout. He was waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not die before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Moved by the Spirit, he went into the temple courts. When the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what the custom of the law required, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you may now dismiss your servant in peace, for my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all nations, a light for the revelation of the Gentiles and the glory of your people, Israel. The child's father and mother marvelled at what was said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, this child is destined to cause the falling and rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be spoken against so that the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed and a sword will pierce your own soul too. There was also a prophet, Anna, the daughter of Penuel of the tribe of Asher. She was very old. She had lived with her husband seven years after her marriage and then was a widow until she was 84. She never left the temple, but worshipped night and day, fasting and praying. Coming up to them at that very moment, she gave thanks to God and spoke about the child to all who were looking forward to the redemption of Jerusalem. When Joseph and Mary had done everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. And the child grew and became strong. He was filled with wisdom and the grace of God was on him. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Forty days after Christmas, the church celebrates Christ as an infant being brought to the temple in Jerusalem, as described in the Gospel reading we've just heard. The words of Simeon are expansive. 
providing a vision of the future global significance of Christ, which echoes and affirms the message of the angels to Mary and the shepherds. Simeon's words are powerful, but they are also poignant, since his glorious vision ends on a jarring note of warning. This child is destined to be a sign that will be spoken against, and a sword will pierce your own soul too. The Feast of the Presentation has long been known in the English-speaking world as Candlemas, a callback to the medieval and modern tradition of blessing and distributing candles on this day, to symbolise Simeon's proclamation that the child in his arms will be a light for revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of God's people Israel. The practice is perhaps particularly evocative here in the Northern Hemisphere, as the feast day always coincides with a dark and some might say depressing time of year. It becomes a timely reminder of the light of Christ. But the symbolism of candles on this day is, I think, deeper than just being bright and pleasing and enlightening. We all know that part of the characteristic of candles is that they don't last forever. They are consumed in the burning. So what starts off looking like this soon begins to look more like this. And down and down it then goes. This gives a jarring note to the symbolism, which is actually entirely in keeping with the gospel itself. There is great glory, but it will not be realised without cost. And so we might reflect in our own experience, for instance, that hope does not automatically eradicate grief. To believe in the resurrection of the dead does not mean that we do not mourn when somebody dies. There is great glory, but it will not be realised without cost. But that is not the end of the story, nor is it the end of this sermon. I want to turn to our first reading, which was from the letter to the Hebrews a magisterial account of why salvation needs Jesus. The author of the letter writes, Since the children, that is you and me, have flesh and blood, he too shared in their humanity, so that by his death he might break the power of him who holds the power of death, that is the devil, and free those who all their lives were held in slavery by their fear of death. This is a powerful idea. Some age-old terrors are named in these verses. Death, the power of death, the devil, slavery. But Christ, it argues, sets us free from the fear of all of these. Without Christ, the writer brazenly suggests, human beings are held in slavery all their lives by fear of death. Death is not taken away by Christ, as we well know, but it is shorn of its power. The Christ who is presented at the temple in Jerusalem is at peak human vulnerability, flesh and blood, in the world, barely a month old. We have all been as he was then. And because we are born, we have to die, just as he had to die which is why grief is necessarily part of human experience. Grief afflicts us, 
but it need not consume us. Because through Christ our eyes are opened to a wider divine reality, of which we are all a part, in which death does not prevail. A little later in this service, you're going to be invited to light a candle. You'll see it burn brightly, and at the same time you'll see it being consumed. But I'd like to invite you to look beyond that. An ancient prayer used at the lighting of the Easter candle looks past the candle itself and takes time to give thanks to God for the bees the bees, who, even as the wax on the candle burns away, are continually at work making new wax to the glory of God. It's a medieval prayer, and it's a very medieval concept, but it's also meaningful, I think. We light a candle and are blessed by its light, but at the same time we are all too aware of its finite nature as we see the wax burning away. But in the wider economy of God's creation, out of sight of all of us, the wax is being replenished. We see the light and we see the loss. But God has seen to its overall sustenance and renewal. As you light your candle, you might want to think of Christ on this day, the feast of his presentation. You might also, this year in particular, have thoughts of grief and loss and the darkness of these days. But I'd also like to invite you at the same time to think of the bees working away out of sight. In the light of Christ, even though a sword pierce our souls, we need not fear. Because God, in God's fullness, is active in sustaining and renewing. And we are part of that reality of the fullness of God's creation. We are sustained, we are renewed through Christ.
and Amy will now lead us in a time of intercessions. Let's pray together. In John we read, a light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. We thank you, God, for the promise of Christ's light, its promise of love, and its promise that darkness has not, does not, will not overcome. We pray for Christ's light to shine in the world, to shine in political decisions and diplomatic conversation, in the distribution of the vaccine across borders and to poorer nations, to shine across political divides here in our own union between home nations and parties, further afield between the White House, Congress and the Senate, and between other parties across the world, those in power and those holding them to account. May Christ's light shine in those regimes that do not tolerate opposition and in failed states where any rule of law has been overwhelmed by strife and civil war. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for Christ's light to shine in our nation. With all those missing school, work and colleagues, friends and family. To shine with all those whose anxiety and stress is growing as the situation continues. With all those who long to stop and rest and can't. With those who have lost those they love without saying goodbye. May Christ's light shine in homes and conversations, in families, in shared accommodation, and with those living alone. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we thank you for the ways in which we have seen and continue to see Christ's light in the continued collaboration across borders in tackling this pandemic, in those who continue to speak for the voiceless at this time, in ongoing acts of community, the love of neighbour for neighbour and of neighbour for stranger. We see his light in our worship together, in our shared prayers, our encouragement and care for each other at this time. Help us to notice the ways in which we can be Christ's light to others and to respond. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We remember all those in a moment for quiet who are not experiencing Christ's light at this time and who feel as though the darkness has indeed overcome just now. Be with them, Lord. In your mercy, hear our prayer. Help us, Lord, to continue to receive your light. Help us to seek it, to delight in it. Open our hearts to your love, that we may know ourselves loved and might love you and others in return. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. And so now, believing the promises of God, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And so we now come to the heart of this service, in which you're invited to light a candle. And as we light our candles, I will use the following prayer. Lord God, the spring and source of everlasting light, pour into the hearts of your faithful people the brilliance of your eternal splendour, that we who by these kindling flames light up his temple to your glory may have the darkness of our souls dispelled and so be counted worthy to stand before you in that eternal city, where you live and reign, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. We'll walk the so far, and every step will be a proud of this rising new day dawning. Sound of singing fills the air. Two thousand years and still the faith is burning bright.
now approach the end of our service, I now offer the following prayer and invite you to respond with the words praise to Christ our light. Father, we have sung your praise with shepherds and angels. May Christ be born in our hearts today. Praise to Christ our light. We have shared in the joy of Simeon and Anna. Help us like them to trust your word. Praise to Christ our light. We have greeted Jesus in the light of the world. May we be filled with the light of your love. Praise to Christ, our light. And now as we go out into the world, I send you off with the blessing. Christ, the Son of God, born of Mary, fill you with his grace to trust his promises and obey his will. And the blessing of God Almighty the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen.